I now know why these tents are so popular. So if you're a hiker or a wild camper and you're wanting to lower the weight of your pack while maintaining some decent amount of space and most importantly on a budget then this could be the tent for you. The good old classic Lanshan 2. Now there's probably a million and one reviews on YouTube about this tent but how many of those reviews have got views like this? Probably not many. So pretty late to the party when it comes to this tent. The Lanshan 2 it's not the pro version because I wanted to be able to change the inner. If you get the pro, it's a single skin tent. If you get the standard one, it's a double skin tent. I've gone for the mesh inner. You can buy a four season version with a solid inner, which I may buy for the winter if I'm gonna be using this tent in the winter. So my go-to kit when I've tried to be, I'm gonna say ultra light, but I'm not an ultra light camper and I never will be. But my choice of tent has been the Lanshan One. Now, for a couple extra hundred grams, this is a decent upgrade, in my opinion. The amount of space is brilliant. The ease of pitch, just like the Lanshan 1, is brilliant. So in my opinion, if you use trekking poles already, and you don't want to spend a lot of money on a tent, this, hit me in the face, this is what I'd go for. So I'm going to pitch it up, and I'll show you around it. Decent. So there we are, all pitched up, the Lanshan 2. So the tent itself comes in at 1060 grams. All in, trail weight, so for me, that's the pegs and the footprint with the stuff sack, it's 1220 grams. So a 1.2 kg for a two man, really spacious tent. I don't know, it's a no brainer. Obviously, if you're summit camping in winter, high winds, probably a no go. But for a glorious day like today, it's the perfect tent. Why pay more? Unless it breaks. And then I'll be flipping. So the outer fly sheet is 15D material with a hydrostatic head of 5,000 millimeters. Now the bathtub floor is 20D with a hydrostatic head of 6,000 millimeters. So the price I paid for this tent, all in, tent with the footprint, were less than 150 quid. Now that were at the time of me buying the tent, not 100% sure what the price is now at the time of recording, but what I'll do is I'll find a link and I'll pop it in the description. And if you're interested in it, you can check it out. It comes in two colors. You've got this green and you've got the brown. The reason why, this is a weird reason. I probably do prefer the brown, but I went for the green because a lot of people have the brown. So I want it to be a little bit different. And my Hilleberg Solo is brown or sand. So I wanted to switch it up a bit because obviously I'm always camping in that. Now a common upgrade people do to these to modify them, upgrade these plastic ram's head door hooks. So the doors hook onto this ram's head and it's made out of plastic. So I guess it is a weak point. You can buy the Z-Pax metal version and that'll just be a straight swap and it'll fit nicely. They use a few other mods as well that you can do, but I'm probably just going to leave it as it is. It works fine. One thing I have got is some nine inch stakes just for the door side, for that side and the other side, because that's what has the most tension on the tent. And they're just for, if it's rocky ground like this, I know I'm going to get them in good and proper, just smash them in. Whereas the rest of them, they're in, they're all in. Obviously if it were windy, you'd want to make sure they were in good and proper. Now there's so much space inside for two people. I want to open it up, but with all these midges about, bloody hell, there's a gap in the zip there. They're going to be in there, aren't they? Loving life. But there is ample space and the vestibules are massive as well. Decent. So the poles right now are set at 125 centimetres. Free FUL gear recommend it set between 120 and 125. So if it were really windy and pretty cold, you could drop that to 120, maybe even a little lower. And what that'll do then is just bring this fly sheet a bit further down to the ground. Now what I've done, because it's a really warm day, is just lifted the poles as high as possible just to get plenty of ventilation coming through because it's not going to be a cold night, so I'm not worried about that. 
to be honest, I'm probably going to sleep tonight with them doors open like that. Because the moment I wake up in the morning, I want to look to the side and just see that epic view. As long as your sleeping system's up to scratch, the correct comfort rating and all that stuff, correct hard value on your mat, as long as it's not raining or windy, you'll be fine with just the mesh. Now, there's probably six reasons why I really rate this tent. Number one, the price, really affordable. Number two, the space, plenty of room for all your gear and two people, I'd say, with the vestibules. Number three, the ease of pitch, probably takes five minutes to whack this up once you've got a hang of it. Number four, I'd say, is the stability. As long as you put this up properly, get the pegs in good and proper, it's actually quite a stable tent. And that is down to number five, it's decent quality. The materials do seem really well. The stitching seems decent. The zips are good quality. Now I've had a history of budget tents with a zip and a zip failing. Don't want that happening to this tent, so let's not go into that. And number six, the looks. I think it's a cracking tent to look at. It's a lovely shape. It's an iconic shape now. There's so many of these tents that are like this with two trekking poles. Decent. Right, I'd say that wraps it up. It's a cracking tent. If you want to see the full video from this wild camping trip, then make sure you click up here. I'll put a little link in there for you. Click on that and you'll head to that video. Nice one. Thank you for watching. Peace out in a bit.